I got a spider on my head? Yeah, it's sort of like a zombie spider. Mummified spider? Just got brown here. I want to know something. Why does this keep happening to me? Why do I keep getting jobs where I have to dig foundations underneath a house? We had that bungalow job where we had to chisel into volcanic rock in order to add a foundation. And then the very next renovation, we had to repile the entire backside of a villa. And now that I bought my own house, here I am again, crawling under a house. To be fair, I always had help working under these houses. And this time, I have help again. Raymond. You guys ready to dig under the house? Yep, sure. I was ready yesterday. I was going to come midnight. Nah, this isn't a job I'm interested in learning about, actually. Sorry? <laughs> You're on your own. <laughs> we need to get ready for the foundation of this beam. And that involves going under the house and digging a 700 mil deep, 700 mil wide by 700 mil wide hole under a post. That's the problem room that we want to get rid of and it's one end of the beam. So you've got that one post over there and then you come all the way over to here and in line with this wall is the other post. I have a theory. I have a theory that um, you can tolerate crappy jobs if you understand the bigger picture. There's all these posts going down the side of this house here and they kind of share the weight of the wall but all of a sudden you're putting one end of an eight meter beam onto one post. So that post all of a sudden has more importance placed on it, more weight, more responsibility. So if you understand that when you're digging underneath it, it, it helps it make sense, I think. At least that's what I'm going to tell Leela. Hey, bro. Oh, <laughs> Are you under the house? That looks good on you, Scott, under the house. Oh, yeah, really? Oh, thanks. Yeah, no, it looks good. I don't know if the pat's really necessary. Well, yeah, there's a lot of cobwebs under here. Oh, is that right? You're supposed to go through the broom and clear them all out. What's going on? You, you don't feel like digging under a house, Rich? No, no, I'm, I'm going away for the long weekend. I can't help you out. Oh, I thought, thought, I'd, thought I'd just check. You should have warned me. You should have warned me. I would have been there in a heartbeat, but um, I made other plans. Oh, mate, cladding. The reclad. So you got a few pole holes to dig, have you? Yeah, just two. So not too bad, but they're big ones. I hope it's, I hope it's rocky as shit. <laughs> okay, bro. <laughs> Good luck. Welcome, Leela. Hello. Not too bad under here, eh? No, I almost can stand up. Meeting of the mole people. <laughs> <laughs> so there's three of us, Raymond, Leela and myself, and only two small shovels. Three small shovels. Get a trade behind your son, you can always fall back on it. You're filming right now and I'm doing nothing. <laughs> so I'm about 300 mil down and I'm starting to hit clay. That's a good thing. Look at the size of that. How's it going, Ray? Good. Done. You guys are making it look easy. Yeah. Yeah, when does the hard uh, work start? <laughs> <laughs> that is a crater. I mean, I can, I can fit in the hole. So these guys have been digging a lot faster than me. So now I have to try and convince them to finish the hole I'm doing. Oh, hey, Ray. <laughs> what are you up to? Since you did such a good job on the first hole, I wonder if you could look at the hole I'm working on. Um, I can have a look, yeah. I've just got some important business to take care of, that's all. Oh, yeah. okay. Ordering materials and it's a bit complicated. It's too busy to do the actual work. Luckily, we got an apprentice today. Yeah, well, I'll, that... I'll show her where the shovel is. I think my plan's working. Looking good, guys. Thank you. <laughs> all from under the house. All right, the next step in our footings journey is to get some steel, reinforcing steel, and drill it into the existing footings. We've got to bond the new concrete to the old concrete. Easier said than done. 
You're a tall guy, man. Your legs don't even touch the bottom of this. You look like a little boy. It's a big hole. It's not what it looks like. Yeah, maybe. I mean, the beads don't help. Here you go, Ray. Thank you. What do I do with this? Do your imagination run wild? You don't want that, Scott. <laughs> What do you think? I think it'll work a lot better with a vacuum. Yeah. It's not bad though for a vacuumless system. Yeah. That connects the new footing to the old. This is bonding agent. Oh yeah? Yeah, if you, if you got relationship problems, <laughs> use a bit of bonding agent. Uh, bonding agent, if you want to bond old concrete with new concrete, make sure that you got a good grip, good bond. Clean the old concrete block, brush this on. We basically have eight minutes before this glue goes off. I've done one side, now we need to do the other side, but we just realized the holes aren't deep enough. There we go, steel cage at the bottom, 70 mil up from the clay. So the top stuff ties the new footing to the old, and the bottom stuff makes sure that the new footing has a solid base. And now, now we're ready for the inspection. See this, uh, see this, this black building here? That black building right there. They made the ring from Lord of the Rings. Fun fact. Still careful of my fractured toe there. It's mostly healed. That was a fail. We failed the inspection. But we kind of passed. I made a mistake during the inspection. This might help you actually if you have to get a building inspection one day. He was very happy with the footings, very happy with the steel, very happy with the space around the steel, the depth of the footings, where they were located. He said, yeah, it looks perfect to the plans, happy with everything. And I said, oh great, so you'll just send through the documentation? He said, yes. He sent through the documentation and it said a big fat fail. Now where I went wrong is I assumed, I assumed that him saying that it all looked good meant that we could proceed with the job. I should have said, so are we ready for the next step? Can I book in the concrete? Can I pour? Make that clear, you know? Because now I'm not sure. The documentation says footings look good, but there's a couple of other things may be needed. The point is, I'm not sure if I can pour concrete, and now I have to spend time emailing and phone calling before I pour the concrete. Assumptions. Assumptions are the mother of all stuff-ups. That's what my first boss used to always say. He used a different word, but I know some of you watch this with your kids. So I'm sure I'll be able to sort that out in the next 24 hours and get the concrete sorted. 
But that's the end of this exciting episode. But before you go, a word from our sponsor. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform for you to build your online presence and run your business. I'm a big fan of Squarespace, they helped us build our website, they helped us promote our business. They have online video making tools to make your media creation easier. They have portfolios and galleries that will really make your business look good online. And they have e-commerce tools that will help you sell anything you want to sell. We sell services, you might sell a product, their e-commerce tools make it easier regardless. Look, if you don't have the time to make a website and you just want a beautiful template that you can import your media into, your photos, your text, and you know it's gonna look good as soon as you post it, then Squarespace is for you. But don't take my word for it, Squarespace also offer a free trial. And then once you're ready to launch your website, head over to squarespace.com forward slash Scott Brown Carpentry to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thanks to Squarespace. Never assume. Always clarify. See you in the next exciting episode. We're building stuff in here. A juicy truck. That's the first time I've seen one of those in months. Which means people are starting their South Island road trips. Summer is definitely on the way.